in his fourth chapter of the epistle to the Galatians, said the Apostle Paul, in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, to redeem them that were under the law. The psalmist, he satisfies the longing soul and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. He break their bands in sunder. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word. Or let's put it another way. God gave us his word. The biggest thing God ever said. Jesus Christ. His incarnate Son and our Savior and our Lord. And when God wanted to say the biggest thing he ever said, his eyes ran to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for a young lady, hardly more than a teenager, whose heart was perfect toward him. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for the man, the woman, the boy or girl whose heart being perfect toward him he may show himself strong on their behalf. So if at the outset of this introductory evening session tonight you turn with me just for a moment to the first chapter of Luke's Gospel. Luke and chapter 1. <clears throat> God sent his angel to this young lady, this virgin girl. And through the lips of his servant, the angel Gabriel, God said, <clears throat> Fear not, Mary, verse 30, Thou hast found favor with God. Now, when did Mary find favor with God? Humanly speaking, this is our first introduction to the young lady. We have the foreshadowing, of course, as all of us know in the Old Testament. That foreshadowing that God gave us in the third chapter of the first book in the Bible, Genesis 3.15, God rebuking Satan. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. It's the seed of that woman. Jesus, to be born of Mary, shall bruise your head. In the process, you will bruise his heel. In the seventh of Isaiah, God said, I will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Thou shalt call his name God with us, Emmanuel. The Word incarnate, the Word made flesh, the Word who was in the beginning with God was God and by whom all things were made. In the ninth chapter, unto us a son is given, his name Everlasting Father, Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace. And the zeal of the Lord of Hosts will do this, something inexplicable apart from a divine intervention without human explanation. So, the foreshadowing is there in the Old Testament that this is our first personal encounter with Mary. And to this young lady, little more than a teenager, God says, you have found favor. When did she find favor? We know nothing about her educational background. We don't suppose that she ever went to Bible school. She never hit the headlights. But you see, God had been watching a little girl grow up. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking, looking simply for any boy, any girl, any man, any woman, anywhere, who will let God, as God, be strong on their behalf. And in all kinds of little ways of which we are totally unaware, this young girl, in her early childhood and in her early teenage years 
had learned to reckon with God on the assumption that as God he was big enough for the job. Nothing more complicated than that. Nothing that was recorded for your information or mine till now unnamed, unsung, unknown, unrecognized. But that's exactly where God chooses. Those through whom he's going to accomplish his timeless end. Every now and again, of course, that choice based upon their disposition surfaces and the world becomes aware of their availability and the things that God is pleased to accomplish through them. Not always, always at once. But long ever before any boy, girl, man or woman comes out into the limelight recognized to be the human vehicle of the divine end, God's been watching. That's where he selects each one of us in the little nitty gritty things that are unknown, unsung, unadvertised. But where he sees us demonstrating a certain disposition toward God that allows him to move magnificently in all the power and dynamic of deity into our human circumstances, allowed by us in his faithfulness responding to our faith to demonstrate his integrity. Thou hast found favor. That's why God didn't, didn't expect her to be shocked, overwhelmed, uh, incredulous, or cynical when he made a, a fantastic proposition. Fear not, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom, of which he will be king. There shall be no end. And not in cynicism, not in incredulity, but with wide-eyed wonder, says she to him, God's messenger, how shall this thing be, seeing I know not a man? The physical premise, absent. Betrothed, yes, indeed, to a man called Joseph, but the marriage not yet consummated. The answer was very simple. God's answer always to the question in our hearts as to how some divine end is to be accomplished. God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Absolutely no explanation but God himself. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And by the way, Mary, just for your encouragement, it may interest you to know that your cousin is in the sixth month and in three months time another little baby boy is going to be born, John the Baptist, of whom it was said of her, Elizabeth, that she was barren infertile, physically incapable of bearing. So, for your encouragement with Elizabeth, <laughs> Mary, it was too late, and with you it's going to be too early. Because, you see, with God, nothing shall be impossible. What was her reaction? Well, the reaction of Mary, presented with this fantastic proposition, was precisely that, that God anticipates of any boy, girl, man, or woman whose heart is perfect towards him. And you cannot find anywhere in the Bible a more magnificent nor simpler illustration of the true substance of faith. Behold, said she, the handmaid of the Lord, available. Be it unto me, according to your word. That's all. In all its sublime simplicity. In other words, said she, to God's servant, the angel Gabriel, God said it, let him do it. What do you think God does when he has any boy, girl, man or woman in his presence for whom he has some delightful plan, part of his timeless strategy, and who presenting the proposition simply looks into God's face and says, you said it, you do it. He does it. And that boy, girl, man or woman has learned the secret of living miraculously. A quality of life that has no possible